one buddy Corbin investing in your future real estate here in the studio today with Houston Long. Houston's been with us before. Uh, Houston, thanks for being with us today, sir. Oh, thanks for having me. Hey, uh, I know you're teaching a series at North Metro Area, uh, and it's a series that we needed on uh, uh, on how to start your real estate business. All the all the things a beginner needs to know, really, and a lot of things that your uh, advanced investors may not have ever implemented or might have forgotten over the years, how they can tweak their business, too. So I'm happy to have you doing this uh, series for us, sir. Definitely. It's exciting. Hey, uh, one thing I'd like for you to do before we get started, I'd like for you just to tell us a little bit about yourself and and what really qualifies you to be teaching this class. Sure. Um, Well, basically, I, I started... I didn't start as an investor. I started in the corporate world, and I uh, grew up in a small business family and then uh, went to work in corporate, worked in IT, corporation, big, you know, top five, Fortune 5 top corporation uh, for, for years, and I started investing on the side in 2004, uh, just part-time, slow, just building stuff up, and uh, mainly focused on rentals, and we did that through around 2010, and uh, at the uh, end of 2010, beginning of 2011, I decided that it was time to go ahead and just go full-time. So this is something you really enjoyed? Oh, yeah. I love it. Uh, I love just working around people, uh, not just sellers and buyers, but just everybody around Mm -hmm. in the industry, Uh, even my competitors. Most of us are friends and just have a good time. And... uh, it's a neat industry. Uh, you know, it can be lucrative as well. But, um, but yeah, we, you know, we've we've been uh, full time for about a year and a half, and a little over a year and a half now. Do you regret that? Not at all. Not at all. No, wow, it's, that's it's, good. It certainly presented its challenges, but right. it's uh, it's a good challenge. I like a challenge, and uh, it, it's fun. You know, it's building a business, and uh, you know, real estate's a, a very unique business, and. Uh, that's, I'm excited about being able to share some of this stuff for other people who are considering this. You know, that's that's one of our primary purposes at North Metro Rhea is to is to provide this kind of education uh, for our members. I I saw that we did not have a good beginner class, and I wanted to go through a series, and I I really appreciate you teaching this. Now I know Houston, you're in your your second month of this. You taught your first class uh, in September, which was how to start a real estate investing company. Uh, and I guess that was what, – what did that class consist of? Uh, that class was basically getting started. I mean, I think some of the, the basics that we covered there was was stuff that I believe from, from teaching some real estate investing, uh, we called it REI 101 mm-hmm. back uh, years ago when North Metro was founded, uh, what, five years ago, six, yeah, years, six ago? years ago? six years ago. Six years ago. You know, we, we covered some stuff, and I kept – seeing a similar pattern in a lot of beginner investors and um it was one of those things where i want to make to make sure people have a good solid foundation where they've considered everything they've considered their money they've considered their their strategies and get some direction before they move forward instead of just going out and saying hey i can take over a house let me do it right and getting into a potentially bad situation so that's take basically taking a minute to evaluate everything looking at some ways you can move forward quickly on a shoestring budget without impacting your budget you know, tremendously right. to try this out and see if you like it. Well, that's good, and I know you have a number of classes coming up, uh, and we don't know where this is going to end, but we're at least uh, at least seven, eight classes at this point. So, exactly. so that's good, and I know we're going to take all these classes, guys. They, they will all be posted on the website on com for the members. Uh, they'll be able to access the audio to all these classes. And then I know that you're going to put this together in a video product as well uh, that we're going to put out there online for other folks that could use it. So uh, I'm looking forward to that, and I appreciate your efforts. Yeah. Uh, now, I know today we're going to talk about lead generation, right? Now, what what do you mean lead generation? Is that uh, uh, for things that you're wanting to buy, or is this leads for things you're selling? What? Uh, this is more about getting more about getting growing your business, getting things to buy. Gotcha. Um, you know how to get those leads coming in to start moving into some of our you know future topics about evaluating them and things like, and then you know doing the deals. Right. Um, but yeah, this is basically trying to get leads coming to you so you can buy 
pro- in this case by properties. And it has a lot to do with marketing too. Definitely, definitely. Okay. Um, and, and you know, and a lot of this stuff, uh, you know, we're talking more about real estate investing, but a lot of it can translate. You know, I know a lot of investors have other businesses, mm-hmm. and a lot of those, you know, or, or they work for another business. And a lot of these things can be applied in, in all kinds of businesses and, and get more leads for them. Right, exactly. Okay, so let's get started. Where, sure. where do you want to take us? Well, I think the biggest thing for me is, um, you know, what the question I would ask most investors is, what you know, what's the most important thing? What can you not live, what can you live, cannot live without right. with as a real estate investor? And it's not, you know, a lot of people may say money or uh, you know, uh, cer- certain little things will, you know, maybe a blue pen for contracts. But the the biggest thing is if you don't have customers, you don't have a business as a real exactly. estate investor. So, um, see, so the biggest thing to me is how do you get more customers to grow your business? Now, you can go out and and knock on doors all day long, which I do that some as well. But it's, in my opinion, it's not the most efficient use of my time and there's a more effective ways to do it and the way i do that is marketing and um what it does is it basically leverages your reach Mm -hmm. and you know i mean what i tell people is how many people can you reach on a daily basis if you're not leveraging yourself and I, i saw this last year when i left my corporate job and i first got out there i was knocking on doors and that was my main approach at first and uh trying to make things happen and uh what happened was i would drive all over town all day long and i might talk maybe talk to five people mm-hmm. if they were happen to be home when i happen to drive by their house and they happen to have a sign out you mm-hmm. know i mean it just didn't i felt like i was just missing so many opportunities and spending a lot of time for a pretty minimal return right so um so that's when I started thinking more and more. I've always liked marketing, but I started thinking more and more about just how important it is and how critical it is for for survival, especially if you're trying to do this full time. So, so, um, so how do you how do you leverage? What do you do? Um, we we do a lot of things. Um, I'll tell you the one of the things we've. Uh, I guess first of all, what are you looking? What is your ideal customer? Uh, for for us, I guess that's the first thing to do is identify who your customer is. Yeah, you want to identify your customer. Uh, you know, it, it's going to depend on the investor. For us, you know, we like to we like single family homes and we like mobile homes on land and in parks. So we cater to that. That's our main customer. Um, I'm, you know, we're not looking for necessarily apartments or anything. Or commercial. Now, in your single family homes, are you looking for people that are in distress? Is that what um, you're looking for? Or either distress, uh, you know, we a motivated seller. A motivated seller for yeah, for for the most part, that's the biggest thing. Whether it's a divorce or a foreclosure, or they, you know, they've got a house they just inherited, job, check, whatever the case. Exactly. Right. They're motivated to sell. Well, exactly. That's, whatever the case. Okay. That's kind of our target. Okay. Um, you know, um, once we get those leads in, we can evaluate those and and uh, move forward with those. So um, that's that's the biggest thing. Those. So you're looking for leads. customers that are motivated to sell. Exactly. Basically. Okay. All exactly. right. Exactly. Um, and the the way we do that, pretty much, we you know we've got a you got to do a lot of different things. And a mm-hmm. lot of people say, well, what what's your number one thing? Well. I could probably pick something out as the top thing. I mean, if the top thing, I think the biggest thing, uh, the most important thing to have as an investor or any type of business is you, you want to have your business card, whether it's simple or elaborate, who cares, but have a business card to give to everybody you meet. And that at least starts getting your name out there. You can leave it indoors, you know, mail so, it to people. So you leave your card, if you knock on a door and they're not there, you leave your card in the door? Definitely, definitely, yeah. And, uh you know, pin them on bulletin boards, anywhere I can leave them, stores, so you see a lot of store displays. With the waitresses when I tip. Exactly. There you go. So I'm making sure, you know, it's a good tip. <laughs> so, <laughs> That's right. <laughs> otherwise, it, yeah, you're you exactly might, right. get bad press. But, uh, but yeah, that's, you know, and, and that's the thing is I don't want to depend on any one particular item. I believe it's a it's a push of everything. And there's a lot of free stuff, a lot of cheap stuff that you can do. It's not a lot of money to do a lot of marketing these mm. days, especially with the internet. And 
and good deals on even stuff like business cards and things like that. Um, so it's that, to me, it's a lot of layers, a lot of different things that just ends up everything together pushes more and more leads to you. Right. Wow. Okay, so you got your business cards. What's uh, what's next? Well, some of the things that I'd, I'd say are good things to have, um, and, and I've kind of divided this up into um, – some basic, which is kind of free, cheap, and or easy stuff. Uh, business cards, obviously. Um, email signature. Stuff as simple as that. Well, what is Explain an email signature. Um, you know, when you send out an email, you can have it automatically say, you know, Houston Long at the bottom of it. Well, why not add, in, you know, depending on your audience, uh, why not add We Buy Houses or check out my website, you know, so in, you know, homebegone.com. Or, or my Facebook page. My yeah. Facebook page. Like us on bubble. Facebook. Exactly. Yes. So so we do that. You, you could even have some kind of a, you can set this up really cheap on Facebook. You could even have a have a giveaway for an opt-in there or on your website where, you know, get a get a free ebook on, and there's all kinds of ebooks you can get out there and, and reprint on on how to how to make money investing in real estate or whatever you want whatever you feel your audience would respond to it yep. could even you know uh it'd have to be so I'm, i imagine it'd be something real estate related right. uh and then have that as a giveaway for them to opt into your site exactly there's all exactly. kind and you can have that in your signature oh yeah. yeah like us and get whatever you know yeah yeah clickable pictures sure I mean, you, you can make it pretty elaborate but even if it's just as, as simple as we buy houses or something like that. Just with a phone get, number. Yeah. Let people or something. know how to yeah. get in touch with you. Exactly. And remind people of what you do. Um, another thing we've used is, is brochures. Um, we use a, a website called vistaprint.com, and there's other websites, um, but that's just the one we've used for years. And, and it, it gives you high quality printable items, marketing items, and a lot of times they give them almost free or you can modify them for a few bucks. And we try different things out. And brochures are, are one thing that we've we've tried, some trifold brochures and stuff like that. And where do you leave those, um, Houston? Where do you, what do you use those for? Well, sometimes we'll use those. Uh, we've actually bought a house off of one. Um, we left it in a foreclosure door. We wanted to leave a little more information than just a card. Right. So that had a little more background on us and mm-hmm. what we do and what we can do to help. And... So if it's something you're something you're just casually passing, you might leave a card. Right. But if it's something you're really interested in, you'll leave a brochure. Exactly. Because okay. that, that was one of those situations where they, you know, we're on a time crunch too because it's a foreclosure. So we wanted to right do a little more, and um, mm-hmm. so we've used those successfully. Um, flyers. I mean, that's stuff like you know the post office, things like that. Uh, sometimes. So the post office lets you leave flyers. It's, it, you have to kind of feel it out at each post office. I, what do you leave them on cards, the counter? Do you leave uh, them on the counter, or do you put them up on, on the, the board? board? Yeah. Okay. Uh, the business cards are normally not an issue. Uh, postcards sometimes aren't, and then flyers. It depends on the post yeah. office, but uh, I always try it, mm-hmm. and uh, they, you know, they, they don't smack my hand too hard. Okay. So. Um, you haven't got arrested at the post office for marketing. No, no, no. <laughs> they know me, so <laughs> I just. Quietly take it down if it's. Uh, they don't let I me mean, market properties as much, but they don't mind business cards at all. Well, that's so, good. Um, you know, uh, in addition to that, talking about uh, mentioning mailers and postcards and post office, um, that's something. It can definitely get a little more expensive. It's. I did put it in the basic because, you know, maybe you have fifty or hundred postcards sitting on your desk, and. You ride by a house and you don't know what's happening with it. It looks like there may be something going on. It kind of looks vacant. The grass has grown up. Right. So I'll I got a little voice recorder and you know you can do it on your smartphone or whatever, and uh, or just jot it down and say, well, hey, I, I just drove by one two three Hickory Street, and uh, you know you just say, well, let me when I get home, I'm gonna look that person that address up online maybe on the county tax website, and fire off a postcard to them, mm-hmm. to the owners. And maybe that will generate a, a response back. Um, and also you can get their uh, forwarded address, too. If they, You can have that forwarded on, or you can get to where they're, where they're living if you're wanting an, another address for the, for exactly. the people, too. You can do the address. What is it, address? Uh, 
return uh, correct uh, return address cor- requested. Uh, requested yeah. yeah so we do that on our postcards when we send them now do you ever use usps for that or do you just mail your postcards individually uh we have in the past uh we used to do uh, they used to let you do uploads of mm-hmm. spreadsheets to that um i have not done that recently um that's a good resource for folks if they're doing a lot of mailers and they yeah. don't want to touch them at all you can upload the names and the addresses and push one button and they're gone and they're there's reasonably priced to do that as you 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 can get yeah. uh just yeah. printing and do well. locally yeah that's usps.com guys if you can use that so exactly good 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 stuff Yep, and uh, basically the a couple of other things. Um, signs are something that I, I don't use a lot of. Uh, you know, I, most people see the we buy houses signs. Um, you know, there's a lot of rules and regulations around that, but it's something that uh, certainly works. So that's an option, and you can get it fairly cheap. Um, Put them out on Friday evening. Get them up on Sunday night. Yeah, yeah. There's people who will. Uh, I ran into somebody the other day at a. I was meeting with some friends, and uh, uh, the guy came up, and he happened to do that in Kennesaw. So yeah. there's guys that'll sit that stuff out for you and take it back up. Um, you know, some of the other stuff that I, I was going to mention here is, uh, you know. I know not everybody does. I kind of miss the days of the flip phone. Uh, it's probably more dependable than anything, but uh, right. most people have smartphones now. Sometimes you got you have a tablet as well, and I use those quite a bit when I'm looking at looking for properties mm-hmm. and uh, for leads. And that's just to look at stuff like Trulia, Zillow. I use their apps. Uh, even stuff like HUD has an app, and and. Uh, a, a cool thing I saw the other day, and I think this was from Clark Howard, um, but there's a, a program called HomeSnap, and it's it's I think it may just be an iPhone app, but I use that on my iPad. And we were trying to figure out a property, it didn't have an address, it was just kind of in the woods, and uh, we didn't know what it was. We wanted more information on it, so I took a picture with HomeSnap, and about five seconds. It told me the address, a guesstimate. Really, just off the picture. Just off the picture. Wow. I mean, pretty I know. Cool. I know. One of the classes you're going to do at the end of your series is on technology. Exactly. So I'm sure that will be on your technology list for that class. Exactly. And wow. That, that's we've tried more and more to move as much as possible to, to leverage technology um, with the marketing, but that's one of those things. We were out in the field looking at houses. Uh, going, you know, not really knocking on doors, but we knocked on a couple of doors, looked at a couple other properties, and uh, that happened to be one we ran across in our travels. And we said, whoa, let's pull over. And mm-hmm. that was how we figured out a little information on it so we could follow up on it. Um, one of the biggest things we that, that's been huge for us um, is Craigslist. And really? Yeah. that's uh, See, now, I have not used Craigslist at all. Which is a fallacy on my part. I know I have to. I must start doing that now. You have any tools you use for Craigslist, or do you just do it the old-fashioned way? I, I do it the old-fashioned way, and I know a lot of people use uh, virtual assistants or different tools. Now, I just post a simple ad out there with some pictures and stuff like that, and some text, and and I'll renew uh, my ads every. I'll have a couple of ads running, so I can renew them. You know, once a day they're renewed. Now you have to you have to renew it forty eight hours after, right? So if you yeah, start at yeah. nine, your next day would need to be nine fifteen. Your next day nine thirty. Is that how you should do that? that or? Exactly. Okay. Exactly. So, right. so yeah, that that's kind of how that works. And we we get. Um, I pulled some stats this morning. Um, over the last month, sixteen percent of traffic to our website has come from Craigslist. So. What's some example posts of what you would post on Craigslist? Um, that that includes some of the property stuff too. Mm-hmm. So that and I know at our class you're going to go over that probably in depth the things that you right. post and how you post and that kind of thing. Yeah, and you know what we do is basically like we buy houses and mobile homes, and of course you you got to word it a little different mm-hmm. so it doesn't flag you. But um, you know it may be ask me to buy your house or right. certain things like that and then a little bit of information and then basically link into our website right so um, and we've got a few pictures of stuff like my truck and uh, you know mm-hmm. the logo and stuff like that that'll at least be kind of fun for people to scroll through and see pictures sure sure um, wow so so you use Craigslist just as a generic 
to, to find buyers or find sellers, rather. They find sellers, yeah, yeah. And then to sell the things you're buying, too, because you'd go into that exactly. when in your marketing phase on your exit strategies later on. Definitely. Um, okay. Yeah, we That's use excellent. it for both approaches, but uh, we definitely get some good leads off of uh, Craigslist. It's not so. just junk. No, no. I mean, you know, and you get, that's, that is one thing. You do get some junk. Um, it's not the Dollar General leads. These are real leads. Yeah, I mean, but it, you kind of wade through some of those. and Right. And, uh, you know, it, it's it's definitely worth it. Mm-hmm. Um, we don't see as many individuals posting out there in real estate anymore. We see mainly brokers and investors. But we do know that regular people, civilians, are actually using it and searching it at least. They're just not posting a lot on it, So in real estate at least. And it does come up in uh, Google ranks, all your Craigslist as well, right? So you would need to do SEO for your posts? Is yeah, that correct? I mean we try to we try to make it search search friendly and uh, you know, make sure we use some of the phrases that are gonna reference back and sure. you know, so so it, it, it definitely helps. Um, Good. you know. Um a couple other things that are free, cheap and or easy. Um uh, real estate agents. I mean that's something now, real estate agents are cheap. Well they're easy too. Yeah. <laughs> 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 no. Um, now, you know, we have a ton of respect for agents, and and we we work with agents, um, and and what I'm saying here is basically there's no cost if you partner up with an agent. Like we've got listings sent to us. Uh, Give us an example of how how you would um, you would leverage an agent. Well, some agents, you know, I, I try to make sure the agents I know know what I do, mm-hmm. and know that I'm interested and I'm serious about buying property. So if they get something that might fit, let me know. And we've got some more uh, agents we've partnered more with to say, let's go together and, and send me leads every day, this re- certain report. They've set up a report off FMLS so we know when certain things change or certain things mm-hmm. hit the market that fit our criteria we can have that agent put in a bid, and, and for them, I mean, you know. They make course, a commission off of it. They get a commission off right, of it. So. Right, right. How, how many properties over the last year have you bought through through agents? Um, through agents over the past year, it's not, over the last year it's been a little less because the uh, the REOs have dried right. up a little bit. But we've definitely bought probably three or four well, off that's that. Good. I mean, it's worth doing. Hey, one's off that. Easy. One's yeah. worth it, so, you know. You know, and one of those in particular, talking about using agents, it was an agent I'd met at another closing. He was a selling agent, and I kind of stopped working with the other agent I, I was I was partnered up with. And um, a couple of months down the road, he calls me up and says, "Look, I know you. This is kind of what you buy. Are you interested in this?" And I had pretty much a first look at it. Right. And because he knew he could have a solid cash buyer, so he gave me the lead, and we closed on it a week later. So, wow, I mean, that's good. Worked out good for him. Worked you out never know when you leave your card or who you're talking to, how that's going to going to exactly. uh, later turn into business. Exactly. That's good. Um, networking. Yeah, um, networking, I think, is over the last, talking about the last year deals, that has been the most important thing and the most leads is from networking mm-hmm. that we've received. So either partner deals or somebody gave us a lead to say, hey, this guy's trying to sell. So that's been absolutely huge. And that's stuff like networking at, at local RIAs. That's probably been the biggest thing for us is getting around other investors who know what we do, we know what they do, so we can help each other out. You know, that's the thing. When you generate leads, every lead you generate doesn't necessarily mean that it's a good deal for you. But there's been many times when I've seen a property and I've said, you know, that's not something I'm interested in, but I know this other investor that does that. And, and then you could make money by referring that lead to someone else. Well, and I'll tell you, we yesterday I had two leads. I had one um, lead in Polk County, uh, Cedartown, that was owned outright. And I, I passed that lead to a friend of mine who works over there. And then... Um, I had another lead later in the day for five houses over in uh, uh, Alabama, 
and uh, I know somebody over there as well, so I'm going to get with them to pass that to them as well. So, and that and those are all things that could generate some revenue for you. Definitely, definitely. So that's good. Now, I know the last thing you have on your free list is your uh, knock on doors, driving for deals. Uh, how how big a part of your business now is door knocking? Uh, it's not as big. Uh, we've reduced the time dedicated to that. Uh, you know, we still go out maybe two, three days a week. Uh, it's not going to be eight hours that mm-hmm. day. But, right. uh, you know, we go out and look at stuff. But we've noticed a trend of fewer houses being listed or for sale by owner. And I, the only thing we can guess, at least, is that it's just people are waiting for the market to hopefully recover. Right. And they're underwater. So right. I think I've heard a stat about 30% of people are underwater anyway. So we're trying to reach people these other ways. Mm-hmm. Now, if we're out, we definitely... Uh, go out if we see a house for sale or if it looks vacant we'll check it out uh but it may be while we're checking out some reos or a foreclosure you know that's what tony young's does a lot of training and he and he said that's he gets his best deals when he's on the way to see something yeah it's not the thing that he's going to see it's one of the hidden market that's uh uh that's not on the market that he says don't even the seller doesn't even know it's for sale yeah Yeah. exactly and uh so those are the kind of houses that you stumble upon when you're out driving for deals Gas at four bucks a gallon doesn't help. So that's true. That's you true. To, you have to be on purpose. Very so, true. That's it for our first half of investing in your future real estate. Uh, Houston, stay with us. And guys, we're going to be um, coming back in the in the second segment. We're going to be talking about the advanced strategies that uh, Houston uses to generate leads. So, so stay with us for the second half of investing in your future real estate. Are you interested in learning how to use QuickBooks for your real estate investing business? If so, we have the class for you. Starting October 11th from 7 to 9 p.m., Karen Burchad will teach a five-week series on setting up and using QuickBooks in your real estate investing business. This class is only $99 for members. Video of each class will be posted, so if you get started late or miss a week, you can catch up, or if you want to review the content to get a better understanding. To register, go to northmetroreia.com. Ask continually, how can I figure out what you have available and how to access all this information? To help, we're developing an ever-changing benefits link at the top of our homepage, which is northmetroreia.com. Here you'll find short videos explaining everything from membership to a variety of member benefits, our meeting schedule, how to download over 80 hours of relevant education, providing the last year through local meetings and radio programs, which is updated monthly, to all the monetary benefits, including insurance discounts, 30 to 40 percent off of Sherwin-Williams paint purchases, a 2 percent rebate on all Home Depot purchases, and much more. You can save many times the cost of an annual membership with all the benefits we have to offer, not to mention our 100% money-back guarantee. If for any reason at the end of a one-year membership you do not feel your membership's been beneficial, we'll write you a check for a full refund. No questions asked. Remember, the website is northmetroreia.com. Guys, Buddy Corbin, investing in your future real estate. Back to the second half of our program today. We have Houston Long, local investor, full time, be a teacher, uh, teaching folks about real estate, uh, helping us at North Metro Rio, doing a really good series right now. It's a beginner series of the just the basics of investing, really. And we're uh, we're halfway through our program today, talking about the lead generation phase of the of the training so i know the first half of the program houston we talked about uh the basic things that you use for lead generation i know now we're going to talk about more of the advanced things so uh looking at this good list i see here so uh, let's get started what do you have um well for the advanced this is uh basically more it's either more money and or more time required so some of this stuff you may want to use as a it doesn't mean you can't use it just starting out but right. it might be a little more technical or a little more time required or money so uh none of these are super expensive though um one of the first things uh, and and this is um we've started going away from this is print ads those used to work pretty well for us um, we've started. What kind of print? So we're talking about generating leads. So you're talking about your I buy houses ads. These are yeah, the you know the I buy houses in the newspaper or you know I've tried magazines before, different publications. Those have gotten us leads in the past, and they still do. But 
and I wanted to include it because it, 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 it may depend on the market. I mean, if somebody's in a much more, uh, I'd say, rural setting, that's probably going to be a lot more, uh, a lot better of a tool than, say, somebody in Atlanta. Right. Um, in a more uh, urban setting. Um, so, you know, it's in there. It's a little more costly because you've got to pay for it. Um, but it's it's a tool to Now, are to you running try. an I Buy Houses ad currently? We pulled our I Buy Houses ad out of the paper a couple of months ago. And uh, at this point, we feel like in this area, in this market, we can use that money better in, in another way. If you were writing an I Buy Houses ad, how would you write it? Uh, we've typically kept it simple. You know, we buy houses and mobile homes in our case. Um, sometimes people may say, you know, family man buys houses or something like that. It's neat to experiment with different ways, uh, see what kind of response you get. Um, we make sure we have our number in it uh, so they, they can reach us. And we always put our website in there, too, so they, you Did know, you get traffic? Oh, there's really no way to really tell. It's hard, There's yeah. no way to generate to, to, to see how where that came from. Yeah, we always said we buy houses, land, and mobile homes. Exactly. Um, all, um, all price ranges, um I say all price range, most condition, all price ranges, I think is what we said. Something just really simple with a phone number. Yeah, that's... And we ran that for years and years and, and did well off of it for a long time, but we saw the same thing that you're seeing. Exactly. And it's, you know, it's not a bad thing to try. It's worth trying if, you know, maybe throw 40, 50 bucks at it and see if it works for you. But a lot of times you got to be in there consistently. Too, and, and the so. thing is you got to answer the phone. That's true. Very true. If you, if you do not line. answer the phone... And that's the same with Craigslist, too. That's like we true. were talking about Craigslist yeah. in the last segment. Um, if you do not answer that phone, those folks do not leave a message. No, they'll they'll keep calling. And uh, and talking about that, um, he, that's a huge point because I don't do the greatest job of calling those people back, the people I miss, because I get a lot of calls. And But I try to, if I miss a call and they don't leave a message, give them a call back because... That house I was talking about that I bought off the uh, brochure right. was exactly that case. They called, didn't leave a message. It happened to be a time where I was able to give them a call back, maybe an hour later, and it turned into a deal. I don't know that he would have called again. I very seriously doubt it. So right. that was a one-time opportunity that has You have to be accessible. Good. You know, it's amazing. We can talk about all these different ways and how things have changed, but you still have to be available to talk to these people. Exactly. You know, you still have to make the communication. Definitely, definitely. But uh, uh, that's good. That's good. And you know, some other stuff that we've we definitely still use. Um, w- one of the things is that's fairly inexpensive is, is vehicle magnets, and that's something you can have a local sign shop print up fairly cheap, like um, one hundred and fifty bucks. Yeah, yeah, at most. And then even Vistaprint does that stuff. You can design your own online and order it, and it's pretty right. cheap. So. Um, you know, the one thing I would say there is just keep your message very clear. I mean, we've tried it different ways, and it can get hard to read if you try to put too much on it. So we try to get big letters. You know, we buy houses, mm-hmm. simple message, website, phone number, and, you know, even more condensed than the newspaper ad. Right. Um, just to let people know what you do. And and that, I've certainly got leads off of that when we used our magnets. Um, you know, we tried different ones, and, and it it, it works. Um, lets people know what you do when you're driving around. I mean, you think about, uh, you know, and, and we've done lettering our windows. Of course, now my, my truck is fully wrapped, um, and we've got a what's called window perf on the back of my wife's uh, vehicle. And that's just, you know, it's stuff that lets people know when we drive by. And I mentioned in the last segment where we... I was frustrated because I'd only talked to maybe a few people a day. I was driving all over over the county, and I started thinking about, well, what, how could I tell people? All these people I'm passing, hundreds of people a day on 41, 75, and all these side right, roads. Right, Even parked at Walmart. You know, how do I let people know what I do? Because I'm going to look like an idiot if I, or somebody's going to call the cops on me if I just start telling everybody about houses. I think I'm crazy, but it's like, hey, I could just, I could, put it on my vehicle mm-hmm. so everybody i pass will see it so that's we've certainly uh got a lot of uh feedback from it got a, got a lot of leads from it and um uh, and it's known now so that's a a great way to do it you don't have to wrap your vehicle at first but i mean try some magnets they're cheap easy 
and uh, you can peel them off when you want to. You know, I had uh, magnets on my truck for a long time. Uh, ended up getting a call. Uh, bought a house in a neighboring state on the lake from my magnets on my car, and it's my retirement home. Wow. And uh, it's a nice house, acre and a half on the water. I mean, beautiful Man. place. And I had to pay $1,500 in, uh, in credit cards and, and took over, his, assumed his payment. So uh, bought it subject to, still have it. So uh, great place, great, I, probably the best purchase I ever made subject to, and it all came from the uh, magnets on my truck. That is awesome. That is awesome. So you yeah. never know who's going to see or, or when you're driving as to what you know, uh, uh, what business is going to generate. It's like with any of the rest of this marketing. You just never know. Exactly. And, and one of the things, talking about that, um, a call I got a couple of weeks ago, um, and, and again, my truck's it's pretty bright and it's, it's wrapped, you know, green and got a big yellow burst that says we buy houses. Uh, it's like a lime green color, so it's very noticeable. Um, and what we've done is is try to put that out, that logo, everywhere we can. And part of it was, of course, the truck. And uh, we had somebody call us the other day, <clears throat> and and some a lot of the stuff I'm talking about, as I mentioned earlier, I don't want to depend on one particular thing. I want to do a lot of stuff and saturate that market. Right. So when somebody thinks about who buys houses or I need to sell my house, they're going to hopefully think about me. Mm-hmm. And sure enough, somebody saw, I, I, again, I don't put out signs. Somebody saw a We Buy Houses sign, and they said, well, you know what? L- let's wait. We know he drives that green truck. Let's wait till it comes by again and get the number off of it. Wow. So somebody else's sign made them automatically think, think of I'm, you. It's, I'm <laughs> the We Buy Houses guy. So <laughs> that was pretty cool. But it's that oh. saturation right. you know, with the marketing and uh you know, it, it works. So, and if you've got all that on your car or truck, park it some. Park it at the end of the parking lot to where people can see it when you're uh, at Walmart or exactly. wherever you are. Yeah, that's we definitely you gotta you gotta think through that. I mean, if I'm you know walking or running at the park, I make sure and park it where everybody's gonna drive by it. You know, and and you also too, you don't want to be rude to anyone, or if you get mad uh, at someone, yeah. and uh, <laughs> you can't do that. <laughs> yeah, I'm a pokey driver, so, <laughs> so I've had people get on my butt, and I'm like, oh, okay. I was thinking the opposite. I, if I lost my temper driving and uh, yeah, told someone they were number one and had my phone number on the car, that would not be good. <laughs> yeah, and it, it's it, you do have to get used to it, especially when it's wrapped, because people kind of stare at you, and it's yeah. like, what are you, what are they looking at? Yeah. And it's like, oh, never mind. Yes, <laughs> please call me. <laughs> so, so yeah, it's it's uh but those those definitely work. Uh, you know, even lettering a window perf. I mean, you don't have to go full out and do a wrap, but uh, the window perf is awesome. I think that's one of the best things you can do because you can see through it easily. And you know, for depending on what you put it on, I mean, back window hundred, you know, less than two hundred bucks, mm-hmm. and that's a huge. It's like a big business card. It's right. just like my business card in the back of my wife's window. I mean, uh, that's awesome to me. So that's a that's a great way to do things. Um, one of the other things I thought about as I was thinking through all this, hey, I drive by people, I do this. I also walk by a lot of people going to the courthouse, going to Walmart, going you know what a bank, whatever I'm doing. And I said, well, what? Now I'm away from my truck, so now all of a sudden they don't know what I'm doing again. I need to make sure they know what I do. And this may you know a lot of people, man, it's kind of overkill, but but if you want to succeed the way i look at it is if you want to succeed you got to do everything you can to make it work and you know this is one of those tips where it could be any business for this um but i have uh i wear t-shirts almost all the time there's hardly a day i'll not wear one of my we buy houses shirts and most of them are tie dyes yeah i'm looking i'm looking at one right now (laughs) and it's uh now you're you're not a tie dye kind of kind of guy how did you um, or maybe you are. No. I just don't know it. <laughs> I never could see you. If you told me, what would Houston Long not wear? <laughs> I would say, well, tie-dye would be the top of the list because I can't see Houston in a tie-dye. But why did you pick tie-dye? How did that happen? Well, uh, you know, and, and it's kind of like it. that in that case, it doesn't match my other branding other than the logo is the same. But uh, what I started thinking about was I didn't want to just have, you know, 20 green shirts either so yeah 20 polos uh, yeah. With, uh, the, yeah so i said well 
this business, the We Buy Houses, is a bold business. It, you don't have to be as reserved. On my selling side, I'm much more reserved, more of an agent look. Right. But on my buy side, I want to grab people's attention. Right. And the tie-dye make it, it what I've found is it makes it fun. I mean, when, when we went into the store, to, or the uh, sign, uh, well, sorry, the T-shirt place to look at stuff, I called my wife and I said, I think I got the stuff we need. And she came and looked, and she thought I lost my mind. Because, <laughs> yeah, I wear solid shirts, right. khaki pants, <laughs> and, or, or jeans. You're a very conservative guy. Yes. <laughs> and she was like, what in the world are you doing, Houston? And um, I said, I think it's going to work because it'll draw people's attention. Well, now I've got probably 30 tie-dye shirts. And, you know, I've got some solids, too, that I'll wear. You know, now, how long, I'm, when did you start with the shirt marketing? I started that uh, about a, a little over a year ago. Yeah. Now, how much of your biz, do, do you see a lot out of that that you can track to that, or do you just believe it's working? It's hard to track. I mean, what what I know is people have become accustomed to it like the truck. It's like if I'm not wearing one, people are like, hey, where's your shirt? Yeah. So they are reminded what I do, even if they're not in the industry, if they I see me. I got you. And the other thing, I went in the courthouse one day, and 15 minutes, I was getting a new mobile home uh, title done. And within 15 minutes, I had two people approach me about buying their house. Right. So, I mean, does it get me leads? Definitely. Sure, sure. Um, and it even, I'll go to Publix, and the cashiers know that's my truck outside. They've never seen me get in it, mm-hmm. but they know it's we Because it matches. And so does my shirt. So, right. So, um, it, it, again, it's just that saturation. It's the same thing. If they get used to seeing you on a regular basis, and, and they know someone, say, hey, I'll ask the guy that comes in. Exactly. That I wait on. Exactly. And, and my wife does the same thing. She wears T-shirts. She doesn't wear as much. She doesn't tie-dye. wear tie-dye, does she? Not as much. <laughs> so she'll get her pink T-shirts and stuff. Yeah. And uh, she'll she'll go out. And she's gotten several people at different local stores say, oh, do you have a card? Mm-hmm. And it's only, they wouldn't know any other way. It's only right. because we've had that T-shirt on. Right. And, um, you know, if if you're not as is out there or want to be as out there like that you know get you a polo or something put something on it stitch it and, you mm-hmm. know we've got some of those too we've got hats and uh just let people know what you do right so um one of the other things that is is a little more time con- well time consuming but it's also definitely more expensive is um we talked about the usps mm-hmm. and sending out mailers and postcards um Something people may want to consider is sending that out on a bigger scale instead of just the onesie twosies. They may say, "Well, hey, let me hit all the pre foreclosures, or let me hit uh, this particular neighborhood, mm-hmm. um, or this particular demographic, or whatever their target is, and send out, you know, hundreds or, or even thousands of postcards." Um, there's a lot of lists you can buy. There's there's different ways you can mine that data and come up with that. I know in the past we used to have a list of 14 of our target neighborhoods that we would plaster with postcards right? every so often. Um, that's a way to do it. It is uh, can be a very expensive way. So we've, we've started trying to refine that a little bit nowadays, not to just blast everybody, but to get some good target groups to where we have a good return percentage. And we've just started really rolling more to that. Right. Um, but that's it definitely works. Um, you know, a couple of months ago, I sent out uh, three postcards, and it was just to a couple of houses I'd seen. And out of those, I did get a call back, and it was, it's a potential deal. We're still talking through it, but it's a it's a potential deal off just a couple of things. Uh, little postcards mailed out. Um, and the thing I like about postcards, and there's different opinions on this. Uh, we've used mailers, you know. Folded up in envelopes. We've used. We mainly use postcards. I like the postcards because it says exactly what it is right up front. I don't say foreclosure on it. You know, it's just we buy houses, and mm-hmm. if they want to call, they they know what we do. It's it's they can't help but see it. So, right. Um, so if they want to call you, they'll you, they've got your information and they'll give you a call. Um, another thing that I would mention for advanced is having a website. And, uh, you know, that's it's not an absolute requirement to succeed. I mean, I know many investors who, who don't have one, and they've done great. Some folks are using a uh, a Facebook 
yeah. fan page for a website. Now. Exactly, and and that's definitely a possibility to do. Um, you know, it's a lot. There's a lot more flexibility in Facebook now where you can do that. Um, what, what platform would you? Now you're a web guy. What platform do you recommend for for websites? Somebody setting themselves up a website from scratch. Well, uh, here's as weird as it may sound. I am an IT guy, but um, I don't like to try to learn new technology like that because I right. don't want to be a programmer or developer. Right. So what I tend to do is look and see what sites. I pay about thirty dollars a month for a website, that, and they do all the work. Mm-hmm. I just upload my little property thing. Really, that surprises that. me. I so, figured you would have done every bit of that. I, wow, I did for a while. Right, but I'm not. That's not my specialty. So I was like, well, uh, I, I. It was so much time involved. I said, for mm-hmm. thirty dollars a month, I'll piggyback off their technology. Right, and they're adding new stuff, and they're plugged into Facebook, and they've got an app for Facebook, and all this stuff. And there's different websites. I mean, there's one website called RapidSellers.com, and that's a you can do it free at first, and that's what I use for years. You can upload properties, a couple of properties, mm-hmm. and um, and have it as your We Buy Houses site. And yeah. you know, it takes a little bit of time to to maneuver it, but it's pretty easy. And there's not a lot of formatting, so that's what yeah. I would suggest. People I'm a I'm a WordPress fan. Now WordPress is good too. We've got because a of the search site. engine optimization that you can do through your blogs and article posting and those things. Yeah. Uh, so I'm I'm a big where every new site I do now for any business is WordPress. Well, and and we've got our WordPress blog, uh, which is blog.approvedhouses.com. That's integrated in our website, our main approved houses website. Is that how you do most of your search engine optimization? Is through that? Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. what we rely on. We, we we've even got to the point where I would do a post for North Metro. This is how important it is. Um, I do a post for North Metro Rio for the upcoming meeting. When somebody goes on the site and reads about the upcoming meeting, it's a blog post. Exactly. Now, I took and went to Google keyword, the keyword tool, figured out what keywords to use, and we were ranked in the top 10 for Georgia real estate investor classes. Wow. Just off of one posting. Man. You know, like number five. I don't know if we're still there, but, but you know, we, we stayed up there for a while, you know, and that was just off of posting the meeting correctly. Yeah. So if you if you post an article every week or two, and if you know what your keywords are, that you hopefully get to talk about this some of the technology set part of this. Definitely. That that we can really you can really optimize that because it doesn't matter how pretty your website is if they don't know you're there, exactly. it's irrelevant. You know. Yeah. It really is. And but yeah, websites can be huge or they can be failures. Oh yeah, yeah, and that that's something we've really worked on in, integrating. Like I say, the blog into that. We've got our Facebook like um, little widget in there so right. people can see that. Uh, follow us on Twitter, stuff like that, Google Plus, all that stuff. Um, and, and speaking of that, the social media aspect, a huge thing, and, and certainly we'll talk more about that with the technology. Um, but I want to mention, you know, stuff like Twitter, Google Plus. Google Plus is great because of the SEO. I've done nothing with Google Plus yet, so I need. I'm going to listen to a webinar tonight about it. I think. Yeah. Is, you think that's a, that's that's where we're heading? It's a good thing. I love it. It's very. It's a very rich uh, experience, but it, not a lot of people are doing it. It's mm-hmm. not Facebook, and but it's important because it's Google. And right. When you put stuff out there, it helps your SEO. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, LinkedIn is something people could consider. Uh, YouTube is something that I would suggest always having a YouTube channel for either marketing your properties, but in this case, you might use it to bring in sellers with uh, vlogs or videos. And Facebook vlogs, uh, video logs, video like, log. Like a vlog is that like a video. small, like a, a, a short video about what you're doing? Or exactly, yeah. Okay, is that okay? And and uh, so we're we're in fact we're working on a couple of new things with that now. Uh, to integrate in our website and our blog. Um, and the biggest thing to me on social media is Facebook. I mean, it's got 950 million users, a billion projected this year, um, and it's free. You can do stuff like let your friends know. I don't do that too much, but, uh, you know, I don't want to be a spammer for my friends and family, but uh, you also can create a fan page free mm-hmm. and at least get the, the basics down. Put your properties on there, stuff like that. Any static page you have, which means something that you're not updating, not doing anything with, instead of having a page, Facebook can fill in for that. 
right. really easy. Exactly. And let people know what you do. Mm-hmm. Um, and one thing we've done is start using Facebook ads, and that's something that uh, uh, one of the things we went to from our newspaper ads, and for about 10 to 12 bucks a week, we get approximately 120,000 plus impressions on Facebook. Yeah, I know you can you can track that. Are you getting uh you getting any business off that yet? We we are getting some. It's not a lot, but this that part was part of my plan of I don't expect a ton of clicks. Um and I get five, six a week maybe. But I had a message from some another investor the other day. They said, Hey, I just saw your ad. I couldn't help but my eyes were drawn to it because it's that bright green and mm-hmm. you know, bold right. we buy houses right. and uh it just drew my attention, so it worked. And I said, well, that's what I wanted, because mm-hmm. if somebody clicks on it and gives me a lead, great, but I want to remind people what we do. So through one of these mm-hmm. marketing techniques, the next time they need to sell their house, they're going to think about us and be able to contact us through one of these through these avenues. Wow, that's great. Now, um, that's a lot of good stuff, Houston. Thanks. Now, before we close out... I want to talk about what your to- your other topics that we're going to be covering in the class will be. I know that we started with how to start a real estate investment company, uh, which is putting the tools together and things. Then now we're talking about generating leads for your real estate business, which is very good. And it's going to be a good class on uh, on Saturday, October. What day is that? Eleventh or thirteenth? Let me look. Thirteenth. You've seen this is a lot of good information. I know that folks that come to the the class will be nine a.m. Saturday, October 13th at North Metro Rio. For details, guys, go to northmetrorea.com and click on the uh, upcoming meetings link on the left side of the home page there at the top. But now let's talk about some of the other classes that you're going to be, topics you're going to be covering. What, what else are you going to be talking about? Uh, well, for the November meeting, we'll be talking about evaluating leads and, and determining your exit strategy. Okay, so this would be what you do with the leads that you get. So exactly. when you've got the lead, now what do you do with it? Exactly. Okay. So that way you can determine where you need to go from there. Um, after that, we're going to look at uh, funding or financing the deal, getting the money, right. getting the thing going. So how do right. you, you know, how how will you do that? And that's so important in this market because finances can be rather limited right now. No, with banks pretty much out of the picture unless you have a substantial amount to put down. Yep. So some creative ways that, that folks can fund some of these? Exactly, and, uh, you know, different different techniques that good. might turn a potentially marginal deal to potentially a great deal. For okay, them. good. Um, also going to be talking about exit strategies and how to handle those different what, different things. What like, do you mean exit strategies? Uh, rent, rent to own, maybe a lease option or, or flip. Okay, uh, so you take sale. a look at the property and say, okay, what what are my options on this, and what should I look to do with this property? Exactly. Okay, so we've, that's good. We've kind of said, well, what what do you want to determine your exit strategy? This is more of an in depth of how to implement that mm-hmm. exit strategy. Good. Um, then we'll get into marketing your properties, which will help basically whichever of the exit strategy you choose. Then you've got to market it because marketing is totally different if you're wanting to rent that property Definitely. or if you're owner financing the property or lease option it or if you're selling it for cash all those take different strategies yeah, and just one quick example is if I'm flipping a house I'm not going to advertise it in the paper if I'm renting it or renting to own it I'm going to put it in the paper every time it's a little pricey but I get a ton of calls on and it and you're not going to if you, if you thought about listing it with a realtor you would only do that if you were going to flip it. You definitely wouldn't do that on anything that you're owner financing or anything that you're right. uh, that you're renting or uh, or lease optioning. That's that's I completely agree. Okay, good, good. That that's going to be good information. What else we got? Um, and the last thing at this point, at least, um, is just using technology to inv- enhance your real estate investing company, and that's just. It's going to have some of this stuff that we talk about, but it's also just other tips to help your business run smoother. Other technology tools that you've learned in general. Yeah, and it's it's. I've read a great book called Good to Great, and it talks about technology as to enhance your business. Not it's not going to make your business, but it's using those tools to become more effective, more efficient. Wow, that that'd be a good class as well. So. Uh, Houston, thanks for being with us today, sir. Guys, I tell you, you can get more information about this series at northmetrorea.com. Our next class is Saturday, October 13th. Uh, Houston's teaching at 9 a.m. 
Uh, he'll be teaching the lead generation, talking more in depth and giving examples of things that we talked about today and more. And then uh, Joe Thompson will be teaching at 1030 on buying tax liens in Georgia, going through from start to end, how you do it, and all the nuts and bolts of that. So it'll be a great day of education. So, guys, thanks for being with us for another week of investing in your future real estate. Please be advised this recording should not be considered as legal advice. North Metro RIA makes no warranties expressed or implied with respect to the information herein. While sometimes the speakers in our series may be attorneys, the information provided is general in nature and not specific to any particular matter. Before entering into specific transactions of any kind, it's recommended that you consult the necessary realtors, lenders, attorneys, and other professionals whom you may need for advice on your specific situation. Also, please be advised that any personal opinions expressed during the course of this recording may not reflect the views of North Metro RIA or its management. This production is copyrighted by North Metro Real Estate Investors Association. Any reproduction is strictly prohibited without the express written consent of North Metro Real Estate Investors Association. For more information about North Metro RIA, visit www.northmetrorea.com.